Back from another night shift. Uh, finished my three-day weekend. Uh, the hospital, I would say, is very different uh, in terms of the type of sick people that are coming in. But this video isn't about what's going on in the hospital. This video, of course, is going to be about the future of women in America. And recently, uh, you know, I had did a video not too long ago um, talking about AOC, who is a politician here in New York. She covers the Bronx and Queens as a U.S. New York representative, right? And so in the video I did, there was a young girl who, I think she was like 22 or 23 here. She works as an EMS worker here in New York. And I think she, she believes she did a New York Times interview. I believe it was New York Times or the New York Post had interviewed her and talking about, you know, they saw her OnlyFans, you know, asking her questions. What made you, you know, want to get into OnlyFans? And of course, AOC decided to come to her rescue that um, basically saying that sex work is work, right? So you had a young 23-year-old woman. Maybe she lived with her family. Maybe she doesn't who decided to, on the side, basically sell nude videos or nude pictures of herself. And of course, AOC as a politician, and this is actually very important when you realize, when you start to see politicians start to do this, it's because they want you to become, they want it to become normalized in your viewpoint, right? So you have these very left-wing sort of politicians who will try to normalize this and even though it should be I wouldn't say it should be something that is that should be looked at as shameful but more should be looked at as the direction that society is going and that more than likely women especially young Hispanic women like this will suffer because of what is to come and as a result of what is to come will more than likely or have to earn their living via prostitution and this is what it is there is no reason to refer to any of these sort of organizations like for example only fans as anything but prostitution now i've spent quite a bit of time traveling and typically in a lot of countries that are close to venezuela um, you will come across, like, for example, in you know, Colombia, in Cuba, this is a, something that you see quite often, Buenos Aires that I've been to, and you will see quite a bit of very young, beautiful women, even though they may have some sort of an educate, education, prostituting themselves. And it's almost normal, especially in like places like Cuba and in Colombia, because of the collapse of nations around them, especially the socialist country of Venezuela, where many of the women who had degrees, many of the, some of them that I had met <clears throat> or in articles that I have read where many of these women were career women. They were women who, you know, they were nurses, they were doctors, they were lawyers. Uh, they had different types of jobs. But when their country collapsed, they were forced to become prostitutes. Now, of course, this isn't something... Uh, that men typically can do. It's something typically you'll see women do it. And I've met women, you know, when I went to Colombia in places like Cartagena, where there are a large number of prostitutes, typically in, like, for example, like if you were to go here, like I live in Manhattan, and let's say you were to go to like 42nd Street and you were going to go to like where all the fancy bars are. And basically on the outside of those areas, you'd see young women who are in prost who are prostitutes you'd go to like for example even here um when i went to florida and you'll go to like coconut grove area but if you actually go to the clubs during the nighttime you'll find prostitutes inside the clubs inside the clubs and the bars in the bar areas you'll come across women who are typically from places like atlanta and they come down to florida and they prostitute themselves and this will become more normal this will be the new normal for many young women here in America. And that's why you have individuals like AOC who are basically coming to the, uh, like coming to the rescue, so to speak, of young women who are going to be doing this because many of you will be doing this in the future because of what's coming in, in, in America. And that's why things like, for example, um, OnlyFans, there's a New York Times article where it says OnlyFans that was founded in 2016 uh, based in Britain was 
has boomed in popularity during the pandemic. It says as of December, this has more than 90 million users with more than 1 million content creators up from 120,000 in 2019. It says the company, the company declined um, comment for the article and I would too. And so basically, obviously the overwhelming majority of the people who are going to be, who are on uh, OnlyFans are typically, typically young women or women um maybe like celebrity women there was like other women that were on that were on here who utilized it who you like who were able to utilize the platform to make money but because of the overwhelming number of women who are basically joining the who are basically joining the site it says there as the pandemic has devastated sections of the economy and most of the economic areas that have been devastated are typically areas where women work which is like in entertainment um either in like movie theaters restaurants and places like here in manhattan where typically most of the restaurants bars um the downtown area of what's it called um broadway like most of the people who worked in these areas in manhattan is prim primarily um women it's primarily women over overwhelmingly single women who lived here when i first moved into the manhattan um, I believe it was like 60% female, 40% of them were single. <clears throat> and of course, that of course has, the number has increased as I've been here I think, over nine years already. And so this is typically what you're going to see, you know, back in the day, they had things like, um, like a back page, back page was something that was very popular, especially here in Manhattan, where you had young women who were basically going to like NYU or Columbia University. And these women would sell themselves on basically on back pages, basically like, uh, I forget the name of the other site. I think it's Craigslist. Craigslist was another area, was another site where young women would post uh, basically selling themselves for for money right uh, either for, to pay for pay for school etc this will become very much normalized moving forward for many young women which is why you know the, it, it talks about these areas it says some have turned to only fans to make money the platform for selling and of course they use the term explicit photos it's nude photos it's just prostitution but of course they want to try to label it in such a way where it's not viewed in a negative way they don't want they don't want to utilize terms that of course will give a negative connotation but of course this is what it is right these women are going on there and they're basically prostituting themselves in some way shape or form uh basically looking for money because many of the industries that they typically worked in most government jobs. I did another video previously talking about most government jobs, overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly, most of the government jobs um, were typically held by women. Uh, and for every one man that lost his job, 10 women lost their job when it came to uh, positions that were basically non-essential. And that's typically because most men work in essential areas like construction, um, whether it's the fire department, police department, um, looking for like sanitation, et cetera. Most of these areas uh, are typically uh, manned in essence by men, right? Most uh, in medical, in the medical field, most general doctors, and this is easy to look, up, look, look this up. I did another video on this. Most of the general physicians, most of your PAs in the hospital setting nowadays are typically women, but most of the subspecialties like your surgeons, um, typically like your, your neurologist, most of those jobs are typically male dominated. And that's just the way it's been for quite some time. And it's, it's mostly because in terms of the spectrum of and the spectrum on intelligence, men are typically on the higher end of the spectrum when it comes to intelligence. And so it becomes, and, and of course, typically when it comes to things like STEM, you know, science, technology, engineering, and math, most of those are typically dominated by, by men. And of course, those are typically your um, jobs that are typically going to be essential for running, for running an economy. And many of the areas that typically women, most of the jobs that women held are typically not essential to maintain a country. And that's why during hard economic times, most of these jobs just end up getting basically chopped. And because of the dynamic of how things are now in America, where instead of people pairing up, uh, creating a family, living together, you have more individuals who are basically living alone. You have more women living on their own than ever before. And most people nowadays, especially millennials, are forced to move back 
with their parents. I believe it's like 50, a little over 50% of all millennials have basically been forced to move back with their parents, indicating that we are definitely living in hard economic times to come. And because most women typically, you know, the divorce rate is the highest it's ever been. The marriage rate is the lowest it's ever been along with basically baby making, right? The population in America is basically not growing. And so there is a negative birth rate. So the death rate is higher than the birth rate. It's been that way. It has nothing to do with the pandemic, which is why Joe Biden is basically inviting in all of these immigrants. And that's why he said for a part of his plan, he wants to nationalize or naturalize, I should say, uh, I, I believe it's 11 million immigrants, right? So that's why you're seeing, you know, maybe that you haven't heard about it yet, but you will where there's scores of Hispanic people that are basically coming from the South and they're basically working their way towards America because they're waiting for Joe Biden to become inaugurated. And then they're basically going to open the floodgates for a lot of these immigrants to come into the country, hoping to become uh, naturalized citizens. And of course, for many of the people who are on the low end of the spectrum in terms of job availability, now those individuals will now be competing with an additional 11 million individuals who are now basically given citizens citizenship. And America is doing this, in my opinion, because of the debt. Right? They've accumulated and they've printed so much money that America needs to pay that debt back. It's very important to understand that when the government creates debt in the form of a stimulus, right? So for many of you who have been waiting for a stimulus check, basically when the government prints money, let's say I should have a couple of dollars on me. Uh, let's just say, right? Let's just say you have $2 or say so you have $1, right? So you have $1 and this basically represents all of the money that is in existence, right? So if I say to you, if you lend me that dollar, I will give you back the dollar plus another dollar. Well, if this, if this is the only dollar, of course, that is in existence, then the only way for me to give you another dollar is for me to print another dollar. And so when you print or you create another dollar, you have in effect lowered the value of this dollar, right? Because before there was only one. So because it was only one, it has a higher value because it's one of its kind. But then if you create another one, you reduce the value of the original dollar by the number of ones that you've printed, right? So if I print one more, I've reduced the value of this dollar by 50%. So now both of these are equal to what the original one was. And so basically what the government has been doing is they've been printing a lot of the money in the form of stimulus, which is basically means that they, do, they go up to their computer and they type in some you know numerical value and then that shows up into your bank account, right? It's not like the government actually actually prints more they're just going to their computer and typing in away a numerical value and then they're sending it to you as a result of doing that they have to pay that money back plus interest now this doesn't represent anything it's just a sheet of paper the only reason that it has any sort of value whatsoever is because they point a gun at you and they tell you that this has value and this is what you're going to use. That's basically how that works, which is why all the other countries utilize our dollar is because if they chose not to, we would just basically point a gun at them and say, well, yes, you are. And so when the government prints all of this money back, they basically have to repay that money back because they've just basically taken a loan. This, this, the money in the form of stimulus does not come from your taxes. That money is long gone. And so many people say, well, why are they sending our tax money to other countries, right? When, when in the previous bill that uh, Trump vetoed and then everybody was talking about what was in the bill, that money that was in that bill is not from your taxes. That is money that they went to a computer, typed in and said, you get X amount of millions, you get X amount of millions, you get X amount of millions, et cetera, right? But you have to pay that money back. Not only do you have to pay that money back, but your children have to pay that money back because in essence, what they're doing is they're borrowing money from the future and they're bringing it here now. But that bill must be paid. And that bill will be paid by your labor, right? So it's important to understand that it's your labor that they're selling. So when the government was sending money to other countries, 
in essence, what they were doing was selling your labor. They weren't selling their labor. They're selling your labor because the American people are the one that have to labor to pay back the debt. It's just, it's just basically slavery. This is basically what it is. And so they're basically enslaving you now and your children that are to come, which is why, of course, because Americans are not having as many children as they typically were, the government basically wants more people in the country because they need more labor, right? And so they need people to labor for things like Social Security, right? So they, they, they naturalize these individuals and then they put them on the books so that they can tax them, right? And so they tax these individuals so that they can pay off the debt because Americans are not having children. Like I said, the divorce rate is at an all-time high. The uh, the divorce divorce rates at an all-time high. Nobody is really getting married. The, the, the marriage rate is all but plummeted. And as a result, nobody is having children. Typically, most children nowadays, especially within like blacks and Hispanics, are typically towards single mothers. And that is, of course, with a purpose because it's much easier to control women since women make up the vast majority of the voters, right? So women make up a higher portion of voters, so they don't want male and females pairing up because then typically the male will take will take leadership within the family and then it becomes much harder to manipulate the pair. It's much easier to manipulate each individual. And so the easiest way to manipulate men is to manipulate the women, right? That's why you have, you know, the, the Me Too movement and things of that nature to listen and believe and it's primarily so that for the purpose of manipulating men the government cannot physically manipulate men men are to men are typically stronger than women um and typically the government doesn't want to get into a fight so what they'll do is, is they'll typically just manipulate manipulate the women of course to keep the birth rate to keep the birth rate at a certain area for population control in places like china they had the one child policy but here in America, they utilize a different form of child population control, which of course would be forcing individuals to basically to hate each other, right? So male and females no longer come together, create a bond, live together, and form a household. Now there's basically so much enmity between the two that they don't that they don't even pair bond anymore and create families. Instead, they have limited they have individuals living by themselves. They hook up and once in a while you, they, you might end up with a single mom uh, for the most part, many. And that's basically what typically what we have now. But from women going forward, because most of the people who are going to be coming here, most of the Hispanics that are going to be coming to America looking for to be nationalized under the Joe Biden administration are typically going to be men. Overwhelmingly are going to be men. Most of the Hispanic Mexicans that typically here that were individuals that were, you know, picking fruit or um, working in areas like landscape, those were typically Mexican. The ones that were working uh, in construction, typically Mexicans. And of course, though many of those individuals we're taking jobs away typically from black Americans because those are most of the jobs that they're going to be competing against. Typically, a lot of these manual labor jobs that are not necessarily require like long, long amounts of education, at least not in, not in a school. And so what will happen for most of these individuals is the government will give them some form of UBI. If you've been paying attention to Andrew Yang, Andrew Yang is basically a politician, an entrepreneur. Um, but moving forward, he is trying to basically take over for de Blasio. And he is a communist. He is an he is openly a communist by his policies because anybody who espouses UBI is a communist, at the very least on the low level. So many of these individuals want to spread communism and so you know socialism, it's the same thing. Um, and they use different terms for it, like universal basic income, or they'll use terms, you know, like um giving individuals you know like a minimum standard of living like things of some things of that nature for most of these individuals is because they want the labor but they're not really going to pay them any sort they're not really going to pay them any sort of a wage and it's just basically for paying back the debt but the ones who are going to suffer and i have no doubt that this is going to happen in america where you're going to see rampant prostitution among young women to the point where more than likely the government will push to legalize prostitution. Um, if you haven't been paying attention, uh, what's her name? Kamala Harris was basically called out not too long ago 
because she didn't openly support prostitution. Of course, they changed the wording about sex work, etc. But the purpose, but that is the purpose. The purpose is, of course, to lower the standard, you know, make it so that, you know, use more flattering language um, so that women don't feel bad for basically prostituting themselves. And this is, this is going to happen. I have absolutely no doubt. I've seen it in other countries, in many other countries where they introduce socialism or as a result of other nations who have socialistic practices and then it ends up where the men typically are the ones out there working because most of the jobs are typically hard backbreaking work that women typically can't do for long periods of time and what happens is is most young women end up prostituting themselves this will come to america which is why you're seeing things like this gaining such popularity where they it, it went from just 120,000 people to a million content creators with 90 million users i have no doubt that this will continue to grow as many of these young women like this who who of course need to make a living some way the, i know i guarantee you that the government will not uh, push women to be paired up anymore because then it, be, it becomes harder for them to gain control of many of these young women when it comes time to vote this is basically the government's plan moving forward for you unfortunately you were asleep at the wheel too worried about catching a cold and they were busy trying to change change the nature of the game moving forward many of these individuals are going to be living lives like slaves and many of these young women are going to turn to prostitution basically as their only way to support themselves